Again, to navigate to the quarterly progress report section, you can either use the drop down up here under projects, and you will see the progress report section here, or you can just navigate to the left hand side over here and select progress reports. This will be the easiest way to navigate to that section. Um, it, it allows you to let you know. Can everybody make sure that they're muted, please? Um, and what you'll do here is you'll see the quarterly progress reports for your current period. In step one submission, which is the applicant's responsibility. And again, if you had any other grants or disasters that were active, you would also see those listed here. Currently, we've only got 4487 for this applicant. But if you perhaps had the February storms or Hurricane Florence large projects that were active still, you would see those disasters listed underneath here. And you would need to fill out quarterly reports for each of those workflows. Right now, again, we're only in 4487 for this that quarterly progress report period of July through September. So we're going to click on this and navigate to our quarterly progress report. As we look at the summary page, what this does is just provides brief information as to what's going on within that quarterly reporting period for that disaster. So right now we're in the quarterly report period for July through September 2020, which FEMA view, views as the, the fourth quarter. We've got two projects that are active. We've got zero, one that's listed as 100% complete and zero that are fully closed out. This is in step one submission, which is the responsibility of the applicant to submit um, and we've added some notes to this because we had to return it. And this is the submission date, which is the date that the, the workflow was created. For that, for that, you'll see that these are auto generated by the system typically. So they'll be created 30 days before the end of the quarter. And that's when you'll see those show up. To navigate to your quarterly report form, you can either select projects, which will list all of the projects that you have. If you click on that project, you'll see that it takes you to the form you can also click on form over on the left hand side. And this will take you to the forms. So if we go back to our projects, we'll see the number of projects we have listed. If we click on the form tab, it again just takes you to the form. The information we have listed up here at the top is just going to give you an overview of the project, the category of work, the current eligible amount that FEMA wrote the project for, a work deadline for the project, who it was last viewed and saved by. The other option you have here is to view the project and what, you, what this would do if you click on it, is just takes you to the project page for that specific project. So that's a handy function if you just wanted to take a quick look at that project associated with the quarterly report. You can also utilize this section here to submit a time extension, a scope change request if it was needed, and eventually a project closeout. We're working to activate that module within EM grants, and that's how we'll start closing out projects in the near future. Um, if you were to click on create new for time extension or scope change, this will take you to a new time extension or scope change for this specific project. Moving on to enter the quarterly report information into your form. This is going to ask you for your current percent complete which is the percent of construction or work that is complete. This is not based off of the dollar value. We're going to call this project 60% complete. I would like to note, you'll see since we are 60% complete for this project, we see anticipated final amount and anticipated completion date. That is because this project is not currently complete. If we were to change this 60% to 100, you will see that this automatically changes to actual final amount and actual completion date. What that means is if you're 100% complete, you've got your actual final costs associated for the project and you have your actual completion date. We can go ahead and enter that information there. For this one, we are going to call this 60% complete and use an anticipated completion date. The total of funds expended to date should be based off of what you so far have expended on this project. The anticipated final amount would be at that time what you anticipate your total cost for the project to be. We're going to call this what FEMA wrote the project for just for the sake of this conversation. But if you at this point anticipated an overrun for your project, you would want to go ahead and ensure that you enter that information there. 
So say our project was written for $200,000, but we think we're going to come in closer to 250 at this point. For the sake of this one, we're just going to keep it at 200. The anticipated completion date would be the, the date that you anticipate your project would actually be completed. If this were to exceed your work deadline date, this would be a great time for you to use that create new time extension button and create a time extension request for your project. As we move on down, there's a section here for projected funds to be requested for reimbursement. This is going to ask for the projected funds for the next quarter. And you'll see that as we move through the quarterly report quarters, this will change. Currently, this is going to say for the next quarter, which is October 1st through December 30th, we anticipate to incur another $20,000 in costs. When we end this quarter, the next quarter will automatically populate here. So that will be a constantly changing field on the EM grants side. Again, this is an anticipated cost that you will be requesting for reimbursement. Um, and that just gives the state an idea of how much money they'll, they'll need to, to anticipate you submit for those. It'll also help us make sure that we are sending out reminders if we're not seeing anything come through that we're keeping in close touch with the subrecipients to make sure that we're getting those reimbursement requests submitted so that we can turn funds around quickly to you as well. Moving on to the status section. This is going to just talk about the status of the project. So if we select the drop down for work status, we have several options that are selected here. This is where you're going to select the one that best fits the status of your project. Typically, we're going to utilize mostly the on schedule, complete, or delayed buttons. For this project, we're going to call this delayed since we anticipate that we're going to complete on November 1st, 2020. Here in the project status comment section is where you would add any comments related to that delay. If you're delayed for weather, if you're delayed for any other reason, that's where you would select the information that you would like to enter in this box. The cost status is the total cost status of the project. If we were to say that we were going to come in at an anticipated final amount of $250,000, we know that that's over our total eligible amount that FEMA wrote the project for, and that's going to result in us having a cost overrun. If that was the case, we would select the cost overrun button, and, and that's where we would enter our, co our cost status information. Currently, for this project, we're going to say that we anticipate our cost to be unchanged. And this is where you'll add a comment related to the status of the project. This can be anything that's relevant to your specific project. It just needs to be a quick couple words. We don't, we don't want to have paragraphs for this one. It would take too much time for everybody to enter. Um, but for this project, we're going to call it delayed due to weather. And that's going to be our comment that we enter. Typically, what you would see for the submission content consent box is that this is unchecked. Since we've walked through this a few times already, we don't have the option of unchecking this, but before you save this form and move on, EM Grants will prompt you to go back in and complete all the boxes if this is unselected. And you'll see a red, a red mark around that box to make sure you check that you agree that the information you entered is accurate for this form. Before you move on, make sure you select the Save button. Again, EM Grants won't let you move on if you try. We can go ahead and hit ne Next Project. It's going to tell us if we don't save, we're going to lose our changes. We don't want to lose our changes. We've spent time putting this information in. You'll hit cancel and make sure you hit that save button. We're sure we want to save. And then we can navigate to our next project. If you only had one large project for that account, this is the only one that would show up for you. So don't be alarmed if you don't see a next project. That might be your only large project for that grant. If you do have a next project button, that means you have more than one large project to complete a quarterly progress report for. You would navigate to your next project through this next project button. And again, proceed through the quarterly progress report information for the rest of the form. You would click your submission consent box, make sure that we are saving so that we ensure that none of our changes are lost. And if you had any additional projects, for that specific grant, you would again select the next project button. Once you've ensured that all of your information is entered on here, you will click the submit button. And this is where a note is optional. You do not have to leave one, but if there's any other pertinent information you want to trans, you want to communicate to your grants manager, this is where you'll go ahead and leave that note. And then you click the submit button. 
we're going to go ahead and close this out. And then you'll see that there's no other action bar for you at the top. You've submitted your quarterly reports to the next step and you are done with this account for this quarterly reporting period. If you want to take a look through the workflow, you can do that as well. That'll give you the option to do so. Submission is your step. Step two, approval, is going to be your grants manager, and that's where you'll see their name listed here. Once they've completed their review, the quarterly report will navigate to complete, and there will be no other action that needs to be taken. If you wanted to go back through and look at anything you submitted, you can do that by navigating back to your projects on the left-hand side or navigating through your form on the left-hand side as well. If after you've entered your quarterly report, you're afraid that you might have entered something incorrectly, all you would need to do is email your grants manager and request that they return this workflow to you and they can get that edited. To navigate back to your home page, you can either select on your specific account, which you can navigate to up here, or you can navigate to the home page by clicking the home button. This will take you back to the page where you can select your progress reports on the left-hand side, and we can see that those have moved on to step two approval. So again, this is the grants manager is going to review what you've entered, make sure that all of the fields have been filled out, and they will move this along through the system. You will continue doing this through all of your quarterly report periods that you have open for all of the grants that you have if you were in more than one grant with a large project that is obligated. So I know for a lot of our COVID projects, those are still working through the system and they're not obligated. This is only going to be for obligated large projects. Category Z projects do require a quarterly report project submission. They are considered to be large projects by FEMA, even if it is a small amount. Quarterly, category Z projects are reimbursed on actual costs. So we will be requiring quarterly report project submission for those. Could I knock out a couple of questions or did you want to go through anything further? No, absolutely. Please questions. And I'm going to go ahead and stop. We're at 12 minutes and 30 seconds. If anybody needs to drop off, we understand. We're going to try to get through some questions. So feel free to hang in there. Um, I'm not doing anything else.